Our old buddy Mike Westoff, who coordinated many of the top special teams units over a long career in the NFL. A little break uh, working for us in between. Mike, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. And you know Joe Judge. Tell us why you think he can work for the Giants. Yeah, I, I do know. I, I, you know. I don't know him real, real well, but I do know him. Uh, and I thought he did a very good job. You know, I, I, haven't, I didn't go against him too many times in my career, but uh, uh, I, I know him fairly well, particularly last year when I was with the Saints. I, I kind of believed that we were going to end up in the Super Bowl. I believe we you know, actually we should have gone there. And, I, and I, we spent some time, I didn't uh, too much on it, but spent some time studying New England and to get prepared a little bit for them. And uh, I liked what he did. I thought he did a very good job. Uh, I like his background. You know, he played at Mississippi State. He coached at Alabama. He got that hookup between Saban and Bel Belichick is how that occurred. Uh, he worked for Scotty O'Brien, was a, a good coach up at uh, New England, and he did some good things. I thought he was uh, – uh, he did a heck of a good job. And one of my friends who's a very, very good special teams coach and a very good coach, period, Joe D. Camellis, uh, knows him exceptionally well and really went into a lot of detail on him with me. And um, and, I, and I certainly li liked everything he had to say. All right. So you had, so this is something you had been telling me when we were working on the Jets coverage, that you thought more special teams, coaches or coordinators should become head coaches because they have to run a whole unit, if you will. Uh, why do you think, uh, go into that a little bit further, why do special teams coordinators make more sense as head coaches than people generally think and that general managers and owners seem to think? Because of the fact that not everybody now, not all of them, don't get me wrong, uh, it's actually a, a small number. Uh, but the ones that are qualified, that I believe are qualified, I think are very qualified. Number one, they deal with the whole football team. You're, you're not just focused on a handful of guys. You know, some coaches in the National Football League, particularly sometimes a quarterback coach, you know, he'll, he'll coach one or two or three guys. And really doesn't have uh, a lot of a, a lot of interaction with the whole team. They don't have that. Also, in particular, uh, sometimes coordinators in you know coordinating the offense or defense uh, are so focused on what they're doing that they don't really see the whole picture. They're not seeing the game. I th I think sometimes they become very poor at game management, clock management, whether or not you should challenge. You know rules and all those different things. They're just not really geared into that, and 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 it takes the good ones. The good ones learn how to do it. The others, some guys don't really ever get it, and you can see that the mistakes that they make and how they handle the game. And that's one thing that many special teams coaches, not everybody, but many, because see, we're re, we're reactionary. You know, we have to react to what happened. And that's normally what a head coach has to do. He doesn't always get to dictate the circumstances. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for giving us this perspective. We really appreciate you popping on with us real quick. We'll speak to you soon. Okay, it's interesting. I think you'll do a good job.